Ever wondered how the North American Lebula would look at different focal lengths from a wide 35mm lens to a 650 telescope? I spent some considerable time recently capturing this nebula with four different setups and one of these focal lengths gave me a result I never expected. By the end of this video you'll know exactly which lens or telescope is right for your deep sky astrophotography when taking images of nebulae like the North American Nebula, which actually is a very large nebula. If you want honest gear tests and real results, hit subscribe and ring the bell because I do experiments so you don't have to waste your time or money. And it's much appreciated. Here's the lineup then for you. A 35 millimeter, 85 millimeter, 135 millimeter, lens plus my astrocam which is a zwo asi 533 mc pro and this i attached to the lenses using a new piece of equipment i've recently acquired and that is the lens adapter and this has allowed me to try different focal lengths and to try out my canon EF lenses with my Astro camera. So this has opened up a whole world of different focal lengths. Finally, I also shot the North American Nebula with a 650 millimeter lens, which was not really a lens. It's actually my telescope. The telescope I used was a Celestron 130 SLT. And basically it just acts as a 650 millimeter lens. Every shot was taken in the same way, aimed at the same target, the North American Nebula, over many clear nights with identical camera settings and post-processing as far as I could possibly achieve that. But the only thing that changed was the focal length. So let's see how each setup changes the way we see this amazing nebula. First up, 35 millimeters. At this focal length, you get the whole Cygnus region, tons of stars, nebulae, and part of the Milky Way structure. But the North American nebula, it's just a small patch in the image. It's good for getting a general idea, an overview of the nebula and its context in the sky. I basically took three minute exposures and the nebula is quite subtle. The context is unbeatable. You see how it fits into the galaxy. If you love wide field storytelling, 35 millimeters is king, really. Now, just wait until you see the detail at 650 millimeters. Trust me, it's a whole new world. 85 millimeters is a sweet spot for many astrophotographers. The nebula fills about a third of the frame and you start to see real structure in the emission regions. 85 millimeters, this is where you begin to get both context and some detail. I really like this uh, lens actually, and this focal length. If you're shooting with a tracker and want a balance, 85 millimeters is actually a great choice in my opinion. Okay, now let's move on to 135 millimeters and the image that I took. 135 millimeters, I think, brings out the nebula's character. The Mexico and Gulf Coast regions start to pop and the star field isn't as crowded. The 135 millimeters, I think, gives a dramatic and detailed image without losing the surrounding star field. And I really like it, actually. But none of these different focal lengths prepared me for what the telescope could capture at 650 millimeters. Here's where things get really wild. At 650 millimeters, you're really zoomed in. You can see now individual dust lanes and you can see the real fine details in the emission nebula of the North American nebula here and you'd miss this fine detail for sure at the focal lengths that i've talked about so far you know i really like this image the colors really come out and and it's got real pop hasn't it 
The trade-off, though, is that you lose the overall big picture. You gain scientific level detail, but you lose really the context, the wider context of the nebula and how it sits in the area of the sky that it does. Each frame covers only a tiny section. So this is where you can use mosaics. And I may show you at some point in another video more about making and creating mosaics as I have done that once or twice and the results can be really amazing. But back to the topic of focal lengths, any tracking errors that you have will be magnified. Any artifacts will be magnified in this zoomed in focal length. So do be careful. You have your guiding has to be spot on. And this focal length is much less forgiving in terms of the technical skill that you need. OK, now here's all of my results side by side so you can compare them. 35 millimeters gives you the context of the nebula. 85 millimeters gives you a balance between context and detail. 135 millimeters gives you the drama, more of the detail of the nebula itself. And 650 millimeters with my telescope gives you pure zoomed in detail. Each serves a different purpose and your choice depends on your goals and your gear. So which is the best? If you're a beginner, start with 85 millimeters. It's forgiving and delivers impressive results. For more advanced images, I'd suggest you try the 135 millimeter. And the lens I used, by the way, was my Samyang 135 millimeter f 2.8 lens, which is a great astrophotography lens. If you haven't got it, I do suggest you try it out. So at 135 millimeters, this gives you the most bang for your buck. And if you want to explore nebula structure, a telescope with a focal length of around 650 millimeters is absolutely unbeatable, but be ready for a challenge. Now let's talk about what it actually takes to get these shots, both in terms of cost and the learning curve required. You can get started with something like an 85 millimeter or a 35 millimeter lens for just a few hundred dollars and it'll deliver really impressive results even on a basic star tracker if you want to step up to a 135 millimeter lens you're looking to spend about 400 dollars on the lens but you get a big leap in detail and drama jumping to a 650 millimeter telescope setup is something different and actually a, a completely different ball game because you'll need to invest on a couple of items such as a decent mount, probably an equatorial mount and auto guiding and, and all the accessories that come with that. So in order to get the full setup, you'll need to spend about $2,000 for the lowest range setup, a 35 millimeter lens, a basic star tracker and so on, then you just need, you could get away with probably about $900. Now let's talk a moment about the learning curve and not just the cost. The learning curve, of course, gets a lot steeper when you go higher in terms of focal length, because you'll need to be more and more careful about the shapes of your stars and so on. And any errors that you have in your system will be magnified. When you get to 650 millimeters and using a telescope, then you'll need to master polar alignment, auto guiding, and you know the finer details of maintaining those longer integration times. But the detail you get is absolutely next level as you've seen in the video uh, just before. Now, if you're just starting out, I do recommend this upgrade path begin with a 35 or an 85 millimeter lens on a simple tracker and focus on nailing your processing. You could even substitute 
the tracker with just a basic tripod and take very short exposures but I do recommend going the long exposure route and using some kind of tracker. You can then think about moving up to the 135 millimeter lens when you're ready for more of a challenge. Once you're comfortable with multi-minute exposures and stacking, that's when a telescope setup really makes sense. Each step teaches you something crucial, so don't rush it. This is just a guide, and in fact, I didn't even follow this. I just went straight for the telescope and just submitted myself to the huge learning curve that is astrophotography. Now, if this deep sky comparison helped you at all, I'd really appreciate it if you smash that like button. Tell me in the comments which focal length you'd use for your dream shot, or if you've tried something even crazier. And don't forget to subscribe for more real-world astro gear tests